Hello! Thank you for joining us for another installment of History at Home. My name is Jillian and I'm on the creative team at the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. Though we are still closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our goal is to continue to bring history to you until we can reopen again. I hope you've been enjoying our online learning sessions. I know I have. So far, we've talked about the basic 101 of the Tea Party, the teas of the Tea Party, and the ships of the Boston Tea Party. Today, we're here to talk about the people, the people who made it all happen. This is a segment that I like to call Portraits of the Participants. Now, as I mentioned in episode one, we can never be certain of all the people who destroyed tea on December 16th. This was an act of treason. Many took an oath of secrecy to never speak about their actions of this again. Some even took the secret to their graves. To discover the details of this event, we must rely on the oral history, the stories of the people who participated that have been passed down from generation to generation. For today's lesson, I'd like to tell the story of the one person that we know of who was injured on the night of December 16, 1773, John Crane. Now, thanks to Linda Hoover on Facebook for requesting this story. She's a descendant of Mr. Crane. However, I feel like I'm not properly dressed to be telling the story to you. I have to change. One minute. Now that we're dressed, let's begin. It was very cold in December and quite rainy out. John Crane, a local carpenter and veteran of the French and Indian War, was down below decks on one of the ships. He was tasked with tying ropes around the very heavy tea crates so that they could be hoisted up on deck using a block and tackle pulley system. Now, as the men started hauling the crates up from below, the rope got caught. Maybe it was the ice, maybe it was the weight of the crate, but try as they might, the ropes would not budge. The men gave one last tug on the line and there was a loud snap. The crate and the block and tackle crashed down into the hold of the ship. As the dust, or rather the tea leaves settled, we saw that John Crane had crumbled to the floor. Well, it's not looking good for Mr. Crane. I'm afraid our dear friend John Crane is dead. So, we're in the middle of destroying the tea. Our friend is dead. What do you think we did with his body? No, no, no. Now, I know what you're thinking. He's dead. Throw him overboard. But he's our friend. Plus, the harbor is going to be quite a crime scene after the destruction of the tea. John Crane, a known son of liberty, would link everyone to this night's actions. Now, we know Mr. Crane is a carpenter by trade. So, after some quick thinking, the men took his body to a nearby carpentry shop. They hid it under some wood shavings and sawdust. If anyone were to find his body, they'd just merely think he got injured in a carpentry accident. Perfect. After they finished destroying the tea, they returned to the carpentry shop to collect his body. However, when the men arrived at the carpentry shop, they noticed something strange. The pile of wood shavings on top of Mr. Crane's body was moving. Someone brushed the dust aside and noticed that Mr. Crane's own breath was what was causing the movement. It turns out John Crane was still alive! Huzzah! A nice peaceful ending to our story about John Crane. Thankfully, after surviving that nasty blow, he went on to fight in the American Revolution under the command of Henry Knox. Well, friends, that's all for today. I'll be back with more portraits of the participants in the weeks to come. Thank you for joining us for this latest installment of History at Home with the Boston Tea Party Ships and Museum. For more information, please feel free to visit our website at www.bostonteapartyships.com, as well as our social media channels. Also, don't forget to tell us what you want to hear about in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Huzzah!